What's up, nigga? What? You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of The Pitcher Responds, where my friend Rem, also known as The Pitcher from Sergeant Friends, describes something from memory. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to mention that uh, this is my new avatar Corbin made for me to use in videos. I think it looks pretty cool. So far, we only have the one expression, but of course, it is the best expression for it to have. And obviously, with the way I edit, I can't really layer shit anyway, so the point is... This is a new one I'm going to start using in videos, but anyway, my friend wanted to go in and describe all of the seasons of Breaking Bad from memory, doing it one season at a time. Now this will probably be a little bit less crazy and chaotic than the other episodes of The Pitcher describes, uh, simply because uh, he's actually pretty familiar with Breaking Bad, because he's watched it two and a half times, I think now, maybe just twice, or ma maybe he's working on his second time. Point is, he remembers this one a lot more uh, than some of the other stuff we've done. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump in. Go ahead and describe Breaking Bad Season 1. Okay, the main character is Walter White. He is a dude in his... I think he's exactly 50 at the beginning of the show, actually. Um, his wife is Skylar White. His Yo. husband... <laughs> his husband <laughs> is... <laughs> his son is Walter Jr. Likes to go by Flynn. His son has, uh, was it MS? I think it's, I think it's either MS or cerebral palsy. Cere it was cerebral palsy. Because the actual yeah. actor has it. Yeah. RJ Mitty. Yeah. So he works at the washroom. Uh, that's not the right word for it. <laughs> the car wash. He works for a dude named Bogdan. And Bogdan's kind of a dickhead. And uh, Walter White's just doing his thing, washing the floors, washing the cars. Just kind of just kind of a wash of a man. Walter Wash. Washer White. <laughs> Washer White. And, Walter. And he has a he has a brother-in-law named Hank. And Hank is married to Marie. And they're central characters to the story. And Marie is also Skylar's sister. So now you got the family dynamic. You know the family and where they insert into the story. So I just, I just wanted to make that clear. At the beginning of the pilot, you see a flash forward of Hank with unfortunately no pants and a strange mustache and a strange hairdo. I don't remember Hank doing that. <laughs> Walter, same thing. <laughs> Pointing a gun and it seems like car uh, cop cars are coming down. He's in the he's in the New Mexican desert. And then it goes back and then you kind of start picking up the pieces. You, you, you go back to the present day and you see how he gets into that situation. And he just finds out that he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And this is obviously a pretty huge bummer for everyone. Hank is like making jokes and having fun, but obviously he's worried. And that kind of bothers Walt a little bit because of his ego. So then what ends up happening is he, he uh, needs a way to make money fast because he wants to leave a legacy and money behind for his, uh, his wife and his kid. And uh, Skylar is pregnant as well trying to figure out what he can figure out and he had this one uh, kid because he's a chemistry teacher as well as working at the car wash at this uh, local high school he had this one kid named uh, Jesse Pinkman who is a, a kind of kind of a delinquent you said yo a lot kind of has the hair like what and kind of has baggy pants and shit um, the hair like what <laughs> what the fuck does that mean um, and he's saying to Jesse because th they reunite because he he needs he needs to get in on that uh, that drug business, and he says go get the RV. Here's the money I have. It, it, it explains later how Jesse's able to get the RV that they need to cook. But then they they're cooking, they're doing their thing, and I actually don't quite remember how they get mixed up with uh, eight eight ball. I always call him eight ball. Crazy Eight and uh, his cousin Muhammad. Emilio. Yeah. Emilio was Jesse's partman. Uh, partner. Partman. Yeah, partner. Partman, yes. Uh, no, he was Jesse's partner. And then uh, they go to Crazy Eight because they need someone to help distribute it. That makes sense. Crazy Eight's going to be their distributor. Yeah, Crazy Eight and Emilio don't want none of that. In fact, they're just going to have see how Walter makes it and then uh, probably dispose of him, kill him and Jesse. Walter's having none of that, so he, uh, Walter being Walter, is very smart and incredibly knowledgeable in chemistry. Kind of just blows, blows the Amelia the fuck up with copper cyanide acid. It's not called that. Pretty sure it was, uh, was it, 
I don't know what it was. I don't remember. Yeah. Red phosphorus? Red phosphorus. Yeah. I think it was red phosphorus. Yeah, because I was going to say fulminated mercury, but I don't think that's until Tuco. No, that's not until Tuco. It was fulminated mercury. I knew it was fulminated something. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, so Emilio dies from this slowly, but he does end up, end up dying. Crazy 8 is injured. Um, so then they end up, him and Jesse have to take Crazy 8 and tie him uh, into the basement in Jesse's house. And I think this is where I think anyone can agree that the... At least this is where I started saying, okay, it's not where I got hooked necessarily because it takes a while sometimes. For this show, it did take a while. But this is when I said, okay, this show's... I think this show's going to be something special. It's really good. Is when you get all this stuff with Crazy Ape. Where Jesse has to find a way to uh, dispose of Emilio. And he really fucks that up because Walter was not... Didn't describe right... D- didn't teach Jesse what t- Jesse needed to know. And so I was kind of on Jesse on that. I mean, it was kind of on Jesse's side because I think Walter was kind of a bitch. Because he just said, get a tub or a, get, a, get a plastic bin. So uh, Walter tells him to get a plastic bin. Jesse's like, I ain't having none of that, son, because they couldn't find one big enough. At least he couldn't find a one big enough at uh, Home Depot or Department of Bins or whatever the hell he got it from. Department of Bins, my favorite store. He decides, you know what, I'm just going to fucking waste this dick in a fucking bathtub. But the reason why it had to be a plastic bin is because he was using... uh, Hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid to dissolve the body, which does not dissolve plastic, but it absolutely dissolves ceramic. So, Emilio's just a stinking pile of bloody nonsense while he fucking drops in the fucking entire bathroom sink combo floor just gets absolutely obliterated and yeah that's why that was the thing why Jesse was not supposed to do what he did but I'm not blaming Jesse I'm blaming Walter because Walter did not give him specific directions hey you're gonna all the shit in the world if you don't explain to your subordinates why they're doing what they're doing then they might not do it it's like it's the same thing happens in season 2 which we'll get to in another episode of this but like with the fucking uh with the uh, RV, when he doesn't tell Badger why they're why not like to tell Jesse about the RV about how they're moving the RV. I don't remember that part exactly. It's in season two. It's because uh, they got the tracker on the RV, like or not on the RV on Jesse's car. Hank has like the or no Ch- Hank's watching his house. Yeah. And then like uh, Walter's like quick, we need to move this RV because uh, Hank's looking for an RV. And then Hank. Uh, I almost got him fucked. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, yeah, you, know, that's the, you know, this is my private dog. That's season out. three. Is it season three? That's season three. Yeah. You sure? Yes, absolutely. Because I just watched it recently about Okay. But yes, they almost got completely fucked there. Anyway, but you're, we're talking season one today. Yes. Um, so, but it, it always reminds me too, if I don't mind me going on a tangent for a bit here, of Rob Stark. Rob Stark, hell of a strategist. Smart dude. Knew what he was doing, but he never told people why he was doing it. So, when he fucking, when he does all these things and doesn't tell people, like, a huge mistake was, uh, oh, God damn it, it had to do with the Lannisters, and then Rickard Carr Stark ended up killing one of them, and then Rob Stark felt like he had to decapitate him, and then lost the Carr Starks, which was most of his support, which is why he had to get help from Frey, and then that snowballs into the Red Wedding, um, because he also fucked Walter Frey over. But yeah, well, Rob Stark never explained why he did the things he did. So he was a good strategist, but a terrible, terrible leader. Anyway, back to Breaking Mad. It reminds me of that. Always reminds me of that. So now Crazy Eight is strapped with a strap on um, in the basement, naked. Well, he's probably not naked. He has clothing. He's um, also not really a strap. He's got a bike lock around his yeah. neck. <laughs> It's not a sexual situation whatsoever. It's a pretty scary situation. So Crazy Eight's there and Walter's there. And again, this is where I think is like, oh my God, because the very best moment so far is about to come up. And Walter wants a reason to have Crazy Eight to live. He just, he's looking for a reason to spare Crazy Eight because fucking Walter hasn't gone completely wacky banana off the deep end, super psychopath mode yet. He still has some empathy. He's like, please just give me a reason. So Walter just has a conversation with him. Walter was also in charge of uh, changing his diapers. and uh... he, had a, he had a shit bucket. Yeah, I know he had a shit bucket. I'm just having fun. 
in charge of basically taking care of them, giving them food, giving them waste disposal opportunities, stuff like that. And there was this one time where Walter was bringing food for him, but he 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 uh, was having a little cancer cough fit, and he dropped the plate, and the plate shattered. And then when Walter wakes up, he, he cleans up the plate, and he, go, he goes away. And then when he comes back down, he just talks to Crazy Eight, tosses him a beer, he drinks a beer, and figures out a little bit about Crazy Eight's life, how he how his father is in charge of this uh, department store that fucking Walter got the Skyler's the crib from, right? RJ's crib, uh, Walter Jr.'s. And you're explaining how they just had this really sweet, tender human moment. I was like, okay, well, so what's going to happen now? But then uh, Walter, being very smart and pretty meticulous, ends up finding out that the plate that shattered, a shard was missing. And he knew exactly where it was. And he's like, oh, shit, really? He feels like, because, again, if fucking Walter releases him, he knows what's going to happen. Crazy Eight's going to kill him with that shard. So then Walter says, okay, so if I release you, are you going to stick me with that piece of plate you have? And then Crazy Eight tries to stab him, and then he fucking chokes him to death with the bike lock, but ends up getting a couple stabs in his thigh. Um, and then Crazy Eight's dead, and I... At this point, Walter has had to defend himself, so we don't really count that, you know. And then he's actually killed someone, but it's for a very different reason why he'll kill other people later, and it was, you know, he didn't want to kill Crazy Eight, but he had to. So now Crazy Eight's dead and gone and in the gutter and let yesterday's news and fucking diaper time, you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking diaper time. What is this, Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Diaper time! So then Hank's, <laughs> I was about to say Hank's got cancer, but... Walter has cancer, and now he needs, again, what the hell? Crazy 8 was going to be their distributor. What are they going to do now? So they're thinking about going to get get in with this dude named Tuco Salamanca. Um, and Tuco Salamanca, crazy dude. Fucking, like, absolutely inferno man of fucking crazy intentions. Um, the cast was actually afraid to be in the room with Raymond Cruz because how into the character he got. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You can tell. No, he does so well. It was funny when I was watching it with my brother because he was like, this guy is just making me laugh. This guy is silly. He, he, he does not scare me. I didn't scare him until... Um, the season one finale, I take it? Yeah, I think it was season one finale, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, when he beats fucking Nodos to death? Yeah. Yeah. One of his fat henchmen? Well, no, he doesn't beat the fat one to death. No, no, you're right. It was the other guy. Or is it Gonzo? Which one's Gonzo and which one's Nodos? I mix them up. Gonzo's right. the fat guy. Yeah, so Gonzo's the one who lives, okay. Well, until he For gets now. crushed. Until yeah. he gets crushed in season two. For now. So why the... So Tuco, he, he's, he's, he's a druggie. He's fucking crazy. He's off the wall. You know when he puts the cigarette out on his tongue, he actually did that? Like, that's just a trick Raymond Cruz did. And, like, it wasn't in the script. He's like, you know, I do this sometimes at, like, parties and shit. And he's... Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> But so now they need another distributor, and, and uh, fucking Walter is like, hey, whoa, what the hell? Um, so he ends up meeting with Tuco, and I, I remember Tuco ends up beating the shit out of Jesse at first, right? Yeah, because Jesse goes to meet with him. And and Tuco was not impressed with him at all. But uh, I think that's the part, point where Jesse was supposed to originally die. I'm glad he didn't. I'm very, very yeah. glad. I know Walter has fulminated mercury at this point. I don't know why he did it again. This is not meth, and then he fucking throws in as a great Because scene. of Jesse. Because Jesse got the shit kicked out of him. And so then Walter's like, okay, well, I'm going to go get the money because he stole our meth and beat the fuck out of you. Okay, okay. And then he goes in, and he's like, threatening him, and he's like, you know, you're going to pay me 50 grand, 30 for the meth that you stole, and 20 for my partner's pain and suffering. And then Tuco's like, let me get this straight. I, I forget the word he used, but he's like, beat the piss, yeah, out, out of your lackey, and steal your meth. And you come in here and bring me more meth? And he's like, you got one thing wrong. This is not meth. And he chucks Boom! It and he yeah. Fucking glass shatters. Fucking Walter's bald at this point and being, and it's like his bald guy. And boom! It's, you know, it's crazy. And then Tuco, I'm pretty sure Tuco had a little bit of respect for him at that point. And then they start getting into business with each other, but it, it, it is clear very early on that it's not going to be a fruitful or a very stable It's crazy to relationship. me. Tuco is in four fucking episodes. Yeah. He's one of the most iconic characters. Absolutely. Like, he, he had his death coming. It was going to happen. 
It was way too volatile. But yeah, that's Breaking Bad season one for the most part. Uh, I'm going to do one thing as we do with Breaking Bad. I'm going to try to name all the episodes if I can. Okay. First one is called Pilot. Mm-hmm. Second one, Cats in the Bag. Right. And the Bag's in the River. Yep. Cancer Man. Yeah. Um, diaper Guy. Um, <laughs> six is a uh, Crazy Handful of Nothing. Seven is... No, seven is Crazy Handful of Nothing. Nope, six is Crazy Handful of Nothing. Right? I don't... Keep Grey your... Matters, four. Five is Cancer Man. Gotcha. Six is Crazy Handful of Nothing. Seven is Diaper Guy. And that, there you go. All right, well, I don't remember what the actual name for episode seven is, so there you go. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, it's gone. I don't remember. All right, well, this is the longest episode of The Pitcher Describes. 17 minutes, but i got to edit it down, so it's going to be a lot less than that. <laughs> you going to take out some of the nonsense? No, I'm leaving all the nonsense in, but <laughs> maybe some of the, if there's any dead air. You take forever to say nothing. Subscribe. Feed it to your right eye.